session we're looking at job descriptions and we're looking at job descriptions as a sort of standalone because it fits into another foundational piece. So alongside employment contracts, which are your sort of legal foundational piece, this is your foundation to getting the right people in your business, marketing to those people, recruiting those people, and then getting the right performance out of people. And again, it's a piece that's often skipped over. It's seen as a bit of admin, it's a bit of form filling, and then there's a whole, it's not in my job description, that kind of makes people panic. I'll explain that one later. Um, so we're gonna go through job descriptions, how you do them, how you make them work for you, and why they're so important. Again, as a foundation to um, modules on recruitment and indeed performance as well. So when it comes to job descriptions, what do we really mean? What is a job description? I mentioned when we were talking about contracts, that that is a job title is needed in the contract that gives a kind of summary of what the job entails. Job titles are interesting because they don't tend to have the weight and the, that they used to have in that their familiarity across industries is not necessarily there. We'll often see kind of weird, wonderful job descriptions and, and sorry, job titles being used. And, really important that we think about whether it's an internal job title, makes sense, so like a, I don't know, level two solicitor, only makes any sense within your business, um, or is this something that's well recognized? So a job description digs in more detail. And particularly when we're recruiting people, because job titles don't necessarily give away exactly what's expected, that digging into detail is really important. And there's different sort of layers and, and parts to this. So firstly, your job description being a task description. And I'll kind of talk about that in a bit more detail and that we don't want to get too much into the absolute detail here, but we do want to outline really what sort of tasks are expected as part of the role. There's in the role description, which is the wider things. So these are the things that are not necessarily tasks, but they're how you contribute to the business. So what's expected of you. So in terms of things like people management in particular, there'll be a lot more in here if they're at that level. But you might have things like teamwork, communication, the way that you interact with customers, for example, those all might be in there that gives it a bit more of a description than just the tasks. Let's think about this. If we are serving coffee, for example, so if I go into McDonald's for a coffee and the Ritz for a coffee, the task is the same, serve coffee to the customer. The description of how you do that, what that looks like, what's involved in the process is going to be completely different between the Ritz and the McDonald's. So you really need to outline those things so people know what's expected of them. We then use those things to create our person specification. And whereas the bits above are, this is what the job entails, this is what we need from you. The person specification is, well, what kind of person is going to be able to deliver this? So what skills do you need? What experience, what knowledge do you need in order to be able to deliver the tasks that we've got above there. Which of those can we train in the business? Which of those do we absolutely need you to have before you come to work for us? Because they're not things that we're going to be able to train. Key here, the role probably indicates more about what you need from people than the tasks. They're generally the things that you can train on. And then you can use that to create an advert. And um, job description and advert is often used interchangeably. They are not the same. Think about your marketing. An advert is about how you attract people. It's how you stop the scroll in that job board where someone's scrolling through hundreds of jobs with the same job title. How do you stop the scroll? How do you make them stop and look at yours? What makes somebody apply for your job? What makes someone put the effort into that? What happens if they've already got a job? Will they stop, apply for your job? That's the advert. The advert is thinking about them as an individual. So whereas a job description thinks about you as a company, this is what I need. This is what I need you to do. This is what I need you to look like. The advert is, and what am I gonna offer you to make it worthwhile you applying for this job? 
So do think of those two things differently. But if you haven't got your job description clear, your advert's going to be really hard to write. And so is your whole recruitment process. And you know what? So is your whole performance management process as well. So it's really important that we get the foundations right on this one. Welcome to HR for non-HR managers. If you are a people manager, a business owner, or perhaps you work in HR and you're looking for a more practical application of employment law, then this course is absolutely for you. I'm gonna take you through every step of the things you need to know to build up the foundations to be able to manage your team really effectively and keep your business safe. I've devised this course in a way that takes you through each of the foundational pieces as you need them and puts together the building blocks that you need. Look forward to seeing you throughout the course and good luck.